Hi, I'm Jan Doyle. Welcome to Wise Talk. I'm so happy about tonight's guest. It's been wonderful talking to her before the show. Too bad you weren't listening, but you're going to have a chance to hear everything that we were discussing. Her name is Kathy Nutley, and she's a quilt artist, and she has been doing some phenomenal work. Kathy, welcome. Thank you so much for inviting me, Jane. I'm so happy to, I know I know you as a friend, and I've seen your work, and it's absolutely outstanding. And when we were putting up your quilts that are behind us, I've seen some of them before, but when you're up close and personal, it's a whole different story. So let's just get right into it a little bit. What drew you to quilting, Kathy? Well, there's something about cutting fabric into little pieces and putting it back into something magical that looks totally different that has always drawn me. It's the feel of the quilt, the drape of it. It's just how you feel when you wrap up in it. Yes, yes, and I think all quilters, they all love the touch and feel of mm. fabric. It's wonderful. Now, t behind us, we have something that you call row by row. Yes. How did this come about? Well, row by row is a kind of a grass, it was a grassroots movement where they're trying to get quilters back into the brick and mortar stores. Now why are they doing that? Because you can buy it online. You can, but they want to keep these mom and pop, if you will, stores going. Um, there's a lot of camaraderie in a store like that. There's a lot of things to learn, just talking to other people and sharing your ideas. You know what, and I agree with you 100% because buying fabric online is just not the same. Many times the color is not what you thought mm -hmm. it was, but I think it's really the personal interaction and, and be able to touch and feel and learn from others. And it is, people think of little old ladies sewing at home, but it really, it really isn't like that it's a whole community where people get together so you have this one row by row mm -hmm. tell me about some of the blocks well each of these rows um, that you must have eight at least in your quilt to qualify for um, winning a prize mm -hmm. and each one represents a different quilt store that I visited now what was fun oh. was there was only one quilt store that I had been to before and that was close to home in orange, which was at the very top. Okay, and then I want you to just point out what this I noticed. Here. What I noticed inside is a little dog. You yeah. you embellished it. That's adorable. And how did you find make that fence? Well, one of the things that first drew me to this whole project was the fact that they give you the basic design for each row according to the theme of the year, and then you embellish it and use whatever techniques or materials you want to. This one here was really just pieced, and I wanted to add a lot more to it. I've got confetti quilting, I've got applique. This fence here gave me the hardest time. I knew in my mind's eye what I wanted it to look like, but I couldn't get it right. My son Mark is a builder. Um, he drew that for me on his CAD program, mm -hmm. transferred it into my laptop, we then put it into this machine and it cut it out for me. Now that's really phenomenal. This is so this is not your grandmother's quilt shop. No. So this <laughs> is this is a scan and cut. So let's just go through the process again. You had a vision. Mm -hmm. You had a son. Yes. And the son and a CAD. What's a CAD? Um, it's a program that he uses to, I know the term. Computer assisted drawing? Thank you very much. Okay. Yes, and he uses it to make blueprints and things okay. for houses. And so you transferred this into your computer right. and then you put it and it came through here. Yes, along with my husband, my guru. He's my tech guru. <laughs> Everyone he helps me with the cords and the connections and where you go on your computer, but he's taught me a lot. Well, you know, I met your husband, and he's actually sitting in our audience of one, and he's uh, a wonderful guy, and he's just, is. it's very good to have a husband to do these things for you. But a woman could do this alone. I mean, she doesn't have to have a husband. It would take her much longer. It would. Without the guru, but, but yes, 
she could. She could. And these are wonderful machines. I have one of them. And I don't use it as much as I should, but I have one. So now another block that really captures my attention is this mystic block. This one here was actually, um, I kind of redid it. Um, they had a brilliant idea, which they had, um, I guess it was maybe Spoonflower or one of the sites that will print out fabric designs for you. Yes. So you bought this yard of fabric, and everything was sketched out, and I, you were supposed to color these, whether with crayons or markers, and it just didn't hit me. So I decided to embroider, in essence, six little quilts and then put them on a clothesline with little clothespins. Oh, what a cute and idea. these I traced and cut out with different fabric, did my own machine stitching, added little embellishments and nautical charms. It's a lot of fun. Oh, I love the charms. I, now, I was a little sad when you came in here and I saw an empty M&M pack. <laughs> I, I, I thought at least well, I could get That's what Halloween is all about. Yeah, I thought at least I'd get some <laughs> M&Ms out of this. But so tell me about that one. Well, this one is from the Yankee Quilter up in Seymour. And what really drew me was the fabric. I loved it. Because you can buy, during a certain time in this program, you can either pick up a free pattern and choose your own fabrics from your own stash, or you can buy a kit. Some of these, like this one, and a couple, I think... Uh, this one here, I, I just got the pattern itself and then put all my own fabrics. But this one was just so awesome with mm -hmm. the fabrics. It really made it. Mm -hmm. And then I just embellished and I cut out a Casper and a Snoopy running for his life. And, <laughs> and he ate my M&Ms. Now I'm noticing on the side, the border, it's a mm. very, very interesting border. Um, I love the beach scene behind you. This was from Florida. Quilters Haven in Florida, I was visiting my mom, and there are quilt stores even in Europe now, it's international. Yes, I know. When we I was this. in Europe, I, yeah. I, that was, um, we went to London um, oh, about two or three months ago, maybe, uh, actually it was only a month ago, and that was, I wanted to go to a quilt store. You know, I mean, my mm -hmm. whole existence wouldn't be complete unless I went to one. So yes, it is international, but I love your quilting on that, Kathy. It's absolutely gorgeous. And your sense of whimsy is wonderful with the little sandcastle. Is that a button that I see? That is a button, and that that actually came with the kit. Really? There are some pieces in some of the kits that would be hard to find otherwise. It would be. It would be. Now, so you added the borders from the row by row. Mm -hmm. Now, I have something here that we talked about. Now, this is a row by row pattern, or am I confusing it with something? It's not a pattern. It's it's a piece of their program where they eat, they make license plates, and each store will have one, and they have a fresh little phrase. Holy scrap, stash happens. Um, I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do with them yet. I've collected probably about 30 of them, mm -hmm. and I will do something. I have a girlfriend who, who's taken these and made a, uh, a large uh, bag that mm -hmm. they're on. It's, very, it's really fun. Now, I want to go over to this quilt. This is absolutely gorgeous. And this is a combination of... This is hand embroidery. Yes. And machine quilting and... Piecing. Piecing. And did I miss anything? Nope. I think you got it. How long does it take you to make something like this? Hmm. Well, the embroidery took a lot of TV shows. Yes. <laughs> I love, love to work on it during TV. But I, I had mentioned to you before the show that I so enjoy quilts where there's many techniques involved. That's mm -hmm. what drew me to the row by row. And this had the embroidery, it had the piecing, and then it was, of course, Quilt as Desired, which used to scare me, but not anymore. And how did you get over that fear? You know, it's true what they say, practice, practice, practice. And I would always get something like this pieced, and then you're afraid to stick that needle in and go any further. But I've learned some techniques, I've done a lot of practice, and I do a lot of sketching. I have a, an entire sketchbook full of designs, and the more that you practice, you get that muscle memory, and it's all about knowing where to go next with your needle. 
Oh, now that's interesting. I've talked to other artists, and they've shown me their sketchbooks. So what you do with, and you just keep it, and you just, you just, I'm just doing this here. You just sketch, and so you understand where you're going to be going with your next, with your needle. That, I think, is the scariest thing for quilters. You get your needle in the fabric, now where do I go? And as you go around a tur turn, how do you come out of the turn? Where do you go next? How do you keep it all the same size? There was a workshop I took with Angela Walters, and she recommended. Oh, she's very good. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, she's like, oh, I was like, Angela Walters. And um, she recommended using Etch-A-Sketch. And so I bought one. And I didn't like it because I, I didn't feel connected to what I was doing. It was mm -hmm. too distant. And then you erased it. She says you save a lot of paper. That wasn't an, isn't an issue for me to do that. So I preferred to use the hand. But I thought it was an inter interesting technique. I like to use a sketchbook and a certain type of, like the Micron pens, mm -hmm. because it has a certain amount of drag to it, and it almost feels like the needle in the thread. It gives me the same feeling. Oh, isn't that interesting? That is very interesting. Wow, you can tell you're a professional. Wow, when you talk about the pen that you're using. You know, your I hope your husband's listening because that would make a lovely Christmas stocking stuffer. Wouldn't it? Yeah, I'm just saying. You're going to get a bigger stocking. <laughs> <laughs> so I love this. And then where did you get the fabric for this? Because it's, it's perfect fabric. Well, believe it or not, my sister and my niece love blue and white. Mm -hmm. These are all scraps from quilts that I have made them. Oh, that's fabulous. That's fabulous. Yeah. Quilters don't throw things away. We like to oh, save them. No. no, we don't. Now, behind me, there's this wonderful, vibrant <laughs> quilt. Can you tell me a little bit about that? That came into being um, a good friend of mine, Johnny Byer. We've been friends for over 30 years, and we each year we go to Lancaster in the spring to a quilt show. Mm -hmm. And I hesitate to say this, but we decided to challenge each other one year, and we both looked for something that neither one of us would ever choose. Mm -hmm. And we chose this panel. And because it's just outside my comfort zone color-wise, and I've never, I really wasn't into panels before. Mm -hmm. But we decided to give it a try, and we said in one year, we have to have made a quilt with it. And I did. And believe it or not, my husband helped me pick a lot of the fabrics for that. Your husband has a, is a very <laughs> dominant role in your house. He's very good with, he has good advice, um, and he's wonderful at taking me to quilt shops. Oh, that's key. <laughs> that's key to keeping him around, I'm telling you. Now, what I love about it is I love the greens. Now, did you do anything with this, or did you embellish no, this at all? No, no. This was all piecing and machine stitching. And and your husband helped you pick this out? No, not the, um, the fabrics, yes. Yes. The fabrics. Very, very nice. This yeah. is really just beautiful. And so what you did is you outlined the piece with thread, with thread sketching. And I've become a very big fan of panels. Really? Well, when you can incorporate yes. it and, and you have a unique design with it, this is actually not my, I didn't devise this pattern. This is called side lights. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but it, ju it just works so beautifully with a panel that I have a new admiration for yes, panels. Yes, yes. I've, I've been looking at panels, too. I have a girlfriend who buys them all the time. Um, now, one thing that I'm really, really interested in is, and one thing that you're known for, is you do note cards. and um, Postcards. Postcards. Mm -hmm. Now, tell me a little bit about that. Um, well, the postcards, it's, it's more or less like a mini quilt. Um, except that instead of batting in the middle, which sometimes you can depending on the technique, you use a stabilizer to give it a little bit of stiffness because you're actually able to mail these. So now I thought I had pulled this out. Maybe I did it with something else. Okay. But I, what you, so you have these, these kits that you mm -hmm. use. And in here, did you put the stabilizer in? Yes, you did. Yes, I did. So go through the pieces of the kit. Well, each kit is a little bit different depending on the technique or the materials that you need. This particular one is called Beautiful because mm -hmm. it has a B. Um, this really had to do with thread painting. Mm -hmm. um, what I've included in here 
is a piece of fabric that I actually painted myself. Now I find that amazing. Now is that difficult to do, the, to paint your own fabric? It's not. Um, the sad part though is that it takes much longer to mix your colors than to paint. Because <laughs> the painting really? is the fun part. Yes, yeah. yes. And do you have, do you paint like on a wall or the floor? No, or? I have a big piece of foam board that my husband got me at Home There's Depot. There's that husband I again. know. <laughs> we hmm. covered it in plastic. I use his saw horses and out into the backyard I go. Oh, what a good idea. I yeah. use foam board for a design wall. That, I have that too. Yeah, that's, you know, I, I think it's probably a small I like thing. to do it outside because the sun creates more vibrant color in your paints. Yes, yes, yes. So, okay, so you paint the fabric. Um, I have a piece here. This is actually, a, it's kind of a quilting tissue paper. Mm -hmm. um, so, for instance, in this pattern, you would trace the design. I have the design included in the, in the instructions. And you lay it on top of your fabric and on top of the stabilizer. And you, in essence, trace the outline that you've done in pencil with your thread and needle. You tear off the paper and you have the drawing there. Oh, that's So wonderful. you don't need drawing skills to do this. Wow. So, okay, so then now you have it, you've you used the, um, your machine and you've, mm -hmm. and you've created it. So now what? Well, there are instructions in here. For instance, this is thread painting. I have included instructions. I have like what I call a technique sheet to explain what it is and how to do it. And then I have the instructions here along with what colors to use if you want to achieve the same color as I did. And a lot of people do. They, li they like, to, com they like to have the look of that. I think a lot, well, if you're drawn to this pattern, you probably like the colors. Yes, yes. But I think the first time people try a pattern, they go by the instructions, and hopefully the second time they make it more their own. Mm -hmm. That's an interesting way of saying it. And then how did you, I, I'm noticing this has like a satin stitch finish border, mm -hmm. and this has a different kind of border. How did you do this border? Um... This is a new border for me, but I really enjoy it. Um, you cut the back piece larger than the front piece. Mm -hmm. you, these postcards are four by six, so this uh, you would cut, say, five by seven, a little bit extra room, and you actually make a fake binding with that mm. fabric from the back. Now you say they're postcards. Now you could actually send something like this through the mail. I'm just gonna see if the, I can get this on the camera. Yes, you can. Okay, and what did you put on the back? Well, I have a large stamp that um, is a postcard template and I will stamp these, but you don't have to have that to do this. You can use a fine point fabric marker and just draw your own template. Oh, and yes, really you could personalize do that. it more. Yes. As long as you have a message, say, and it can be, you know, season's greetings. It doesn't have to be wordy. Mm -hmm. And the address. Or happy birthday, Jan. And just there you go. <laughs> One or the other, you know. And you're right. And uh, people used to do this with um, four by six uh, photographs. Exactly. And they didn't have a stamp. They would just do. You could just. It's very easy to do. Mm -hmm. Now you, we were talking before the show that sometimes this is an envelope. It comes in. It's a cellophane envelope. But can they use this to send it? You can use this. This is the packaging for the pattern. I don't seal it so that you can use it, although it is resealable. When you're finished, you simply slide the postcard in, you seal it, and you can put this through the postcard. How much, how much in stamps, how many stamps do you have to have? A one first class stamp. Oh, depending, wow. I mean, sometimes they can get weighty depending on the embellishments. And in that case, it's smarter to take it to the post office and ask them. And also, if it's too thick, they put it through a piece of cardboard, very technical. They slide it through, and if it's too big to fit through that, they charge you an additional amount of money because they have to hand cancel it. I see. But you have to remember to put the stamp on the outside of the envelope. Now, I know you give workshops on this at mm -hmm. our, one of the quilt guilds that we're in together, which is how I met you. Um, you gave a workshop, and I know someone loved it so much, she bought eight of them, and she did, she made eight different ones, and because she, and what is the, the advantage of doing something this size as a opposed to something this size? Well, 
one of the reasons I got into it was because I love to try different techniques. This is a very small amount of time and materials, and so you can accomplish some, something much quicker and determine whether you like it or not. Or yes. if it doesn't work out, it's not a great loss. You can try it again. Yes, yes. And it's a wonderful way to practice techniques. And I'm noticing your, um, your, your sewing with a metallic thread. Did you have issues with that? Because I hear people have a lot of issues. I used to have it until my husband bought me a brand new Janome machine. It's you know, the that Horizon. Husband is starting <laughs> to get on my nerves. I was I was okay up to Home Depot, but a brand new sewing yeah. machine. If he's watching, he's starting to get on my nerves. But the, so that was that so, machine makes all the difference. It really was designed for machine quilting. Now what is now a Janome versus what made you choose Janome over all the other brands out there? Honestly, we were at the Biggie many, many, many years ago, and there was a, a woman there from Auburn, Massachusetts. Her name was Chris. She was from a quilt shop, and she had Janome machines and other machines. Mm -hmm. And I was trying out several of them, and I said, if you were going to sit down to quilt, which one would you sit in front of? And she said, the Janome right over there. Mm. And mm. I tried it, and I loved it. Yes, yes, I loved yes. it. I can sew this many of the blocks here um, I all of this is done with monofilament thread in the bobbin and the top I sewed an entire summer making this oh. I never had a problem because I, I have a very good sewing machine. I mean, I'm very lucky to have it. It was my retirement present to me, from me, with lots and lots of love. And um, I, I have trouble with monofilament thread in the, that machine. My Janome treats it like it's nothing. Fine. <laughs> Just fine. Now, um, so when you... So the, the workshops that you give are, are wonderful, but people don't have to attend a workshop. How does one find your kits? Because in, over here in front, now I understand you were, you were telling me you have a blog, but you also are on Craftsy, and yes. you have a free pattern for Craftsy. Could you, and it's this one right here in front. Can you explain yes. that? And I, there were some other ones. Here's the other one. Well, what I've up. done is, um, I've been putting some things on my blog. I, I love to write the blog. I come up with ideas. And um, one of them was about unexpected gifts during the holidays in the form of random acts of kindness. Mm -hmm. And I wrote about that and then decided that the first one I should do is to give a free pattern. And these are very quick and easy to make. You can make them instead of buying holiday cards. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. These are all done with ribbon, and it goes very quickly. I was wondering. Mm -hmm. Yes, 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 yes. So what you do is you just sew, go through the procedure a little bit. Well, I tried to find some ribbon that had text to it that kind of yes. gave a, a theme of what you're trying to say. This is Merry Christmas, I have peace on earth, and you start with that piece, and it's always nice not to have it be in the center. There's that rule of thirds. Mm -hmm. And so what I did was I sewed that on first, and then I just layered them, and sewed the, I overlapped the edges, and you sew them. And did you put another little piece of ribbon between? Like, is, there, is this another embellishment? No, this is, these are just the ribbons that I chose, and this one had the gold on both sides. Because I was, um, I went to New York City to see a exhibit by soldiers who made quilts in the 1800s. Mm. Oh, it was fabulous. It was at the Folk Art Museum. I recommend that you go. But what they did is they didn't, they, they took, they didn't sew the piece like they wouldn't sew this piece down, but they would put a, a small little ribbon between the two and just sew that and attach oh, it down. Okay. So when I saw that, I was wondering if you had done the mm, same thing. No, this, these are all ribbons. Well, that's so. How does someone find you on Craftsy then to download that pattern? Well, you can go into the search engine and put quiltings by Kathy, or you can put in fabric postcard. Oh, I see. So that is your business name, Quiltings by Kathy. Mm -hmm. If they put your whole name, Kathy Nulty, and that won't do it? No. No. Quiltings by Kathy. Right. Uh, and if people forget that and they want to do it, they can, you can, they can always contact me and I can give them the information or 
Um, you know, do you have an email people? How could people contact you? Well, I'm on Facebook also. Oh, you are? I am on Facebook. And how are you on Facebook? What is your... Quiltings by Kathy. Oh, well. <laughs> oh, 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 well, fine. Yes. I'm not too slow on the uptake. Okay, that makes sense. And then uh, we only have a few minutes left. And I just wanted to talk a little bit about... Um, you have a box over there, but you have all of these postcards mm -hmm. that you got. And can you explain this to me a little bit? Sure. These are all postcards that I have received um, in a swap with people from all over the world. And you have a box here, some mm -hmm. of them? This is one of my boxes. And how <laughs> cool is that? Yeah. These are all people that I have swapped with. I have, all, I have many boxes. Um, but for each one of these, I have swapped one. And do you have any particular favorites in there? I do. There was a woman who was running um, a swap. Her name was Mackie, and um, she, I think she was from Aust Australia. And everything she did was just exquisite. She did the Christmas tree there. Oh, wow, this is beautiful. I'm just going to show yeah. it to, into the monitor. This really is. And how nice to get these from all over the world. Mm -hmm. And was this sent in this con container, or was it sent? Uh, most of them, for instance, this one would be because of the beads. Right. You don't want this to go through a mailing machine and get stuck. Now, I'm just going to read this. Hi, Kathy. I'm excited to swap with you for the first time. Hope you like my water art card, hugs, and then she gives her name and address. Mm -hmm. How wonderful is that? That is so much fun. There are a lot of swaps on the Internet that you can join. Most of the ones I do are on Facebook. And I, I've learned a lot, and I've made some nice friends who mm -hmm. we talk. That sounds wonderful. And now, so to contact you on Facebook, mm -hmm. Quiltings by Kathy. Right. And where is your blog there? Or how do people get your blog? There's a link on there that they can go to. Or, okay. or they can just do quiltingsbykathy.com. Okay, and you obviously, or maybe not obviously, your last uh, blogs are available? Yes, they are. Okay, now two seconds left, mm. and now I love these. Can, are we only really very short yeah, time. Lowe's and Home Depot don't love this. But, no. <laughs> but what do you do here? Well, what I've done is I've collected paint chips, and these are my favorite because they have the little square mm -hmm. cut out of them. And anytime I'm planning a quilt, I go through and look at the colors that I'm envisioning in my mind, and I use these when I paint my own fabric because wow. I, I will cut out the piece that I want, and as I paint the fabric, I can lay this on top and make sure that it matches. Wonderful. I'm going to have to stop there. I mean, you know, watch me that I don't take these. I'm just saying. But um, I'm so happy to have you on the show. And if you want to contact her, it's Quiltings by Kathy. Facebook, quiltingsbykathy.com. If you forget all this, you can always contact me at BCTV. And, um, or you can contact me through my email. It's jmdteach at comcast.net. I am so happy to have you on the show. This was, this was exciting for me. Thank so you. So thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me.